So here is an equation. What is it that makes this an equation again? Do you remember? How do I know this is an equation? There's one thing that's sort of like the giveaway. Yeah, give me. Um, the equal sign in the middle. Yeah, perfect. If something is equal to something else, that equals makes it an equation. Okay, so that's how I know what this is. When I want to solve this, solve it, I want to find out, look that thing there, see that guy, he's not a number, he's a pro numeral, but he stands for a number, and I want to find out what it is, okay? So I'm going to show you two different ways of doing this. You remember from last week, we could just try and put in numbers into M and see if eventually one works, but that's very tiresome and very time consuming, okay? Do you have an answer? Yes. Okay, I want you to hold that thought, I'm going to get to you in a minute, Brad. I want to think about before we get to the right answer. How do we get the right answer? Okay. What can we do with this equation to get towards a solution? Okay. So I'm going to show you two methods. Okay. So you might like to make two little headings. We can go method one and method two. Okay. Now what we're trying to do is get the last line to be m equals something, right? M equals something. So you can see I've got this. 3 that's hanging out in the way, and there's a 2 hanging out in the way. And I don't really want either of them to be there, I just want M. So I'm searching for something I can do to both sides to get closer towards having M by itself. Can anyone give me a suggestion? Yeah, thank you. Wait, what I was going to say is, M wouldn't be by itself, it would still be on the 3. Um, well, I want to get past that. I want to get past that. So I'll do, I'll, I can think of two things I can do, and I can do them in any order I like, to get closer and closer towards that. Frank, can you give a suggestion? Um, basically, um, first, first off, you, you, mind, you do 5 minus 2, you get 3. Okay, pause, so, pause. So, I want to take Frank's first suggestion, which is, we want to get rid of the plus 2. Yeah. Right? It's a plus 2, so what's the opposite of plus 2? Minus. minus 2, perfect. So let's write this same line, exactly the same, but just like, remember, it's, it's balanced, right? So I'm going <coughs> to minus 2, subtract 2 from both sides, like this. So here's my first method. Okay. Now, if you have a colour or a highlighter, it would be perfect. I want you to show, underline, put a circle or something, to show I'm doing the same thing to both sides. I'm keeping everything nice and balanced. Because if these two things are equal, you can't do something to one side without doing it to the other. That's excellent, okay? What will that leave me with on the left-hand side once I've subtracted two? Yeah. Um, m divided by three equals three. Okay, perfect, you've done both sides, okay? Excellent, so you can see I've done the left-hand side, these two guys just kind of butt heads and cancel out, and then the right-hand side, five minus two, we all know how to do that, okay? Now I'm in a similar position. I'm better, I've got less numbers, but I need to get rid of this guy, so it's divided by three, what shall I do? Multiply. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna multiply both sides, again, I'm doing the same thing to both sides, and I'm gonna highlight that that's the case, times three, times three, and that's gonna give me an answer, right? So let's have a go. What happens on the left? What happens on the left? These guys are gonna cancel, yeah? Leaving me with just M, and Brad's gonna give us the right answer, which is? Nine. Nine, perfect. Okay. Now what's lovely about this is remember all this practice work we did on substitution? I can use that to check if I got this right. You never need to doubt, right? We think M's equal to nine. Let's have a look at where we started. Is it true? Does it work? Yes. It does, right? Here's how we know. You can substitute this in your head. It's easy enough, right? What's nine divided by three? Three. It's three. Plus two? Five. Perfect. That's exactly what I want. Okay? Thumbs up. Now, I did say I was going to show you another way. Yes, true. You can work backwards. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, kind of we did that. Um, I want to show you another way. So over here, you've got your second heading, right? Do you remember the first time we got rid of the two? That was the first thing we wanted to do. But you don't have to get rid of the two first. You can get rid of the three if you like. How do we get rid of the three, you know, when we did this line of working? What did we do? Yeah. We multiplied through by three. There's divide by three, you get rid of it. I'm going to try and do the same thing here. So I've got uh, m over three. I'm going to leave some gaps here, you'll see why in a second. This is just the line as it is right now. And I want to multiply everything by three. 
Okay? So I'm going to multiply this by 3, and this by 3, and this by 3. Do you see what I did? Now, just be careful. You can see I've multiplied the left-hand side by 3, right? I had to multiply everything on the left-hand side by 3. Don't miss anything out. What's the next line going to be? What's it going to look like? Yeah. I have a question. Why do you always multiply by 3? Uh, I multiply by 3. It's a great question. Because I'm trying to get rid of division by 3. You see that? So if this was division by like 52, I'd multiply by 52. If it was division by half, I'd multiply by half. Whatever number happens to be there. OK. Let's have a look at this. m over 3 times 3 is going to give me just m. 2 times 3? 6. 6. And 5 times 3? 15. Okay, cool. Now, I'm, I'm still getting better, right? I've got an m plus 6, and I've got a 15. What do I do to both sides? Yeah. Well, uh, you can do 15 minus 6. Yeah, I'm going to take away 6 from both sides, right? And again, I'm going to highlight. Look, see? I'm doing the same thing on both sides. It all stays balanced. So what does that leave us with? Yeah. Oh, wait, that line. But like, um, yeah. Before, could you just do the 3 times 3, which equals 9, and then just... Whoop, pause. Where's 3 times 3? Uh, the line above, because m over this one? 3 times 3. Instead of cancelling out, couldn't you just write that as 9 plus 9 plus 6 equals 15 and just say that's true? And ah, but... I can say it's 9. This 3 times 3, one of them's on the denominator and one's on the numerator. So they're not 9, right? So that's why, in fact, they don't lead you to 9. They leave you to m, okay? And remember, this is the second approach. Like, you already know what the answer is now, right? M equals 9. But if you've gone down this way first, you didn't know that. You only found that out after the fact. Okay. So, two different parts to the question. Um, which one do you like better? Any takers here? Yeah? You like method 1 better? Hands up for method 1. Do you like method 1? Yeah, cool. Hands down. Um, I think method 2 is fine. You can see they're both about the same speed. <coughs> One of them gets rid of the fractions sooner. You might like that in the future. See how this one gets rid of the fractions? But the numbers get bigger because you're multiplying. Whereas this one, the numbers stay small, but you keep that fraction all the way through until the end. Okay?